Hey everyone, great to see everyone. A full room here, and uh, good morning, everyone here. Great, glad to be here at uh, Vox Days uh, Luxembourg, my first time at the event. So great to uh, meet the community today. And today I'd like to talk to you about uh, CI/CD observability and how we gained observability into our CI/CD pipeline and uh, how you can too. Uh, I'll use uh, Jenkins as a reference, but uh, the focus is on the principles and patterns, so even if you don't use Jenkins, it'd be very much relevant for you. But just out of curiosity, how many here with a show of hands use uh, Jenkins? Okay, very relevant for this audience here, as I assumed. So, great to see that one. And let's start with a day in the life of a developer on duty, a DOD, so the, the on-call experience, at least how it used to be before the project that I'm going to talk to you about today. And the way it worked is that the uh, on-call engineer used to uh, start the day, uh, start the morning by going into uh, Jenkins and uh, go over the pipelines of the last few hours, seeing if we see uh, any reds, especially uh, red master, and uh, generally knowing if you can uh, finish your, your morning coffee or if you need to jump straight into the uh, uh, dashboards. And of course, if you can see this red uh, sign, then you need to go in and then go over the different runs one by one to start uh, un understanding what happened, what failed, where it failed, why it failed, uh, and how many failed, and so on. Uh, and when I say need to go one by one, is because you have obviously different runs. You have the uh, uh, the, the back end, you have the front end, the app, you have a smoke test, and so on. So you need to go one by one and try and understand uh, the pattern across the runs, across the uh, uh, branches, and so on. Um, and also, no easy way out of the box out of the box to see uh, and compare with historical pipeline runs to understand uh, uh, historical data. So going over the types of questions, example questions, that it, uh, uh, it wasn't easy for us to answer. Uh, things that you'd pretty much expect. Uh, did all runs fail on the same step? Uh, did all runs fail for the same reason? How many of those uh, uh, did the fail failure occur on a specific branch, maybe on a specific machine? Um, uh, if a run or step is taking too, uh, too long, then uh, is that good or not? And wh what is too long? What's the benchmark? These are the sorts of uh, questions it took us too much time to answer, uh, and we realized we need to improve. And remember these questions. I'll go back to them later. So about me, my name is Dotan Horvitz. Uh, this, I just came back from another conference in Berlin, so check out my, my funky ride from... Uh, from Berlin with uh, Luxair. That's, uh, that's my first with Luxair, and it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm the principal developer advocate at logs.io. Logs.io provides a cloud-native observability platform that's built on uh, popular open source tools such as Prometheus, uh, Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, uh, uh, Jaeger, OpenTelemetry, and others, and offers them as a uh, managed service uh, SaaS built for scale. Uh, I'm also, and if you are interested, the topic is not Logs.io, but obviously if you have questions about Logs.io, happy to uh, catch up afterwards and, and answer any questions about that. Um, I'm also a, a CNCF ambassador. CNCF is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, the open source foundation under which uh, there's Kubernetes and also Prometheus and OpenTelemetry and Argo and, and many other projects that you probably uh, know. So if you have questions about Cloud Native Stack also, Happy to, uh, to catch up afterwards. Uh, and I also have a podcast in English called Open Observability Talks about open source development, DevOps, observability, platform engineering, and the likes. So if you like podcasts, uh, check it out on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Uh, and you can find me everywhere, as you can see, uh, at Horovitz, Twitter, Mastodon, LinkedIn, uh, Medium, whatnot. So if you're shy to ask questions here, feel free to reach out to me also afterwards. So I want to go back to our journey with the challenges in the, uh, in the CI CD. But before I talk about um, how we improved our CI CD experience, first let's understand what we need to improve on. 
And this is something that comes back uh, many times that I see organizations and engineers jumping on optimization projects without clearly defining what are the, the KPIs, what are, what are the metrics they're trying to improve on. So for that, I, I really like the Dora metrics framework. Uh, who knows with the show of hands the Dora metrics? Okay, not many, so I, I will say a few words about, uh, about the Dora metrics. Essentially, it's, uh, it started as a research as a research group to understand uh, what makes high-performing teams. By the way, you have a QR code at the bottom uh, if you want to scan for uh, an extensive 101 on uh, Dora metrics, but I'll just give the gist on that. So it started as a research uh, back in 2018. They published a, a famous book uh, known as the Accelerate book uh, that, uh, in which they, they identified essentially four different metrics uh, uh, that indicate the performance of essentially software development teams. Um, so, going over them uh, very quickly, uh, the first one is uh, the uh, deployment frequency. And deployment frequency, as you can see, is essentially how often uh, an organization successfully releases to production. Uh, second one is the lead time for change, or sometimes people call it the cycle time, which is the, the amount of time it takes a commit to get all the way uh, into production. Uh, then there's... Uh, then there's change failure rate, that is the percentage of deployments causing a failure in production. And the last Dora metric is the time to uh, restore service or mean time to uh, recovery, MTTR, uh, which is how long it takes an organization uh, to recover, to restore service after production failure. So these are the Dora metrics. And as I said, the first step is to understand what you need to improve on, in our case, from what I explained to you, it's pretty clear by now. So we need to improve on the lead time uh, for changes, the amount of time it takes a commit uh, to get into production, which in our case was too high and was holding us back. So we are experts in observability. Essentially, uh, that's what we do for a living at, uh, at Logs.io. So we realized that we're uh, missing observability into our CI/CD pipeline. As I mentioned, we use Jenkins, and Jenkins did provide us with some observability uh, out of the box. It's, uh, to be fair with Jenkins, uh, we could enter uh, uh, into a specific pipeline run and see for each step the duration, how much time it, that step uh, uh, took, and we also wired it with, uh, into our Slack. We work with Slack in the engineering, so we got alerts into Slack. So we, get, we got some, uh, some things uh, out of the box, but that wasn't enough for us. And the reason is that we wanted to find uh, a way to monitor aggregated and, and filtered uh, information across all the pipeline runs, uh, across all branches, across all machines, uh, in order to see the full picture on a time scale uh, of our choice, uh, with the filtering of our choice. That's, that's the reason, if you go back to the uh, to original questions. So we set out on this project uh, to uh, uh, address observability into our CI/CD, and these were the requirements for the project. So, first is to get dashboards and aggregated views uh, to see across pipelines, runs, branches, as we talked about before. The second goal was to get historical data to uh, be, to understand the trends and to identify patterns. The third goal was uh, uh, reports and alerts to uh, automate as much as possible. And the fourth one, very interesting one, is test performance, to be able to view flaky tests, uh, test performance to understand their impact on the pipeline. So with these uh, requirements in mind, now let's talk about how to achieve that. And essentially, it takes four steps uh, to do that. Collect. Uh, store, visualize, and report. In terms of the tech stack, we have a lot of expertise uh, with the Elk stack, Elasticsearch. In recent years, we moved to OpenSearch, the, uh, the open source uh, uh, successor of Fork. Uh, uh, and uh, we started, so naturally, we started our journey there. So uh, I, would, I would like to show you how these four steps uh, took place with this tech stack. And let's start with the first step the collect phase. So we instrumented the pipeline to collect all the relevant information and put it in environment variables 
uh, all kinds of information. So I gave a few examples here. Uh, you see here the branch, the commit the uh, uh, machine IP, the run type, uh, namely schedule triggered by merge to master, triggered by push to branch, and so on. Uh, uh, the failed step, step duration, of course, build number, uh, pipeline status, whether it's uh, uh, passed, flaky, or, or whatnot. So we collected all this, and then we uh, uh, created, uh, if you can see here, a summary step, the one that is on the red uh, rectangle there, a summary step that uh, we where we ran a command to collect all that uh, information, all these uh, things that we put in the environment variables, and created a JSON uh, uh, with, with the information, and then stored it uh, into Elasticsearch. Uh, and as I said, we started when we started the project, we were Elasticsearch, and we're doing with OpenSearch, uh, very seamless, so it works both ways. Um, uh, and uh, about the, one, one thing about the uh, so this is the the store. I want to say a word about the persistence because, again, I get asked by Jenkins user. Jenkins does provide some uh, storage capabilities or persistence capabilities out of the box. And we tried that, but uh, we encountered a few uh, challenges with that. So I want to share with you the downside. So by default, Jenkins keeps all the builds on the Jenkins servers, on the machines themselves, uh, and uh, all of them which obviously burdens the, the critical path, the machines that need to carry the, uh, the CI-CD pipeline. So you need to start limiting how many uh, uh, builds you keep and for how many days uh, and so on. So we wanted to persist historical data um, uh, in our control, to control the duration, the retention, and mainly off, the, off of the Jenkins machine so that not to, uh, not to overload the, uh, the critical path. Uh, and we also wanted more powerful access to the historical data uh, to analyze the same way we analyze essentially our production environment. So that's, that's why we went for uh, this storage solution based on Elasticsearch and, and OpenSearch. And after uh, uh, collect and store comes the visualize step. Now, once we have all the pipeline run in Elasticsearch, it's pretty easy to build uh, Kibana dashboards uh, and visualizations on top of that. And of course, if you use OpenSearch, then OpenSearch dashboards. Uh, so that's the how. Now let's talk about what visualizations. And that's very important. Uh, if you remember that these questions that I asked at the beginning, what kinds of questions we wanted to ask, these are the questions that you need to define for yourselves that will then define what kinds of observability you need. So I'm going to give a few examples, but before showing them, I want to emphasize, don't copy-paste my examples. There are good references, but it's just a process. You need to start by defining your questions, what you need to answer, what, is your, uh, what are your observability needs, and then derive the visualizations to meet your needs. So, um, uh, so all these questions, uh, did all runs fail on the same step? Did all runs fail uh, for the same reason? Uh, did all the failure occur on a specific branch, on a specific machine? Um, uh, if, uh, if there is suddenly a step taking longer, is that good, bad? What's the benchmark? All these questions that we talked about before, these are the sorts of questions that dictated the visualizations. So let's look at some examples of how we address these with uh, visualizations. And I'll start with the um, top line status. Okay, to understand, just check how stable our pipeline is. Uh, you did the success versus failure rates. Uh, you can see different visualization in general or a specific uh, time window. And just imagine you start your morning on your uh, on-call shift and you look at that. It's very, very easy to see if you can finish your coffee or if you need to uh, uh, jump and look into things. So this is a very good start for the top line. Next for the question to find uh, problematic steps. So again, uh, visualizing failures segmented by pipeline steps. Again, different visualizations, but ultimately very clearly shown that a single step is very problematic and we need to look probably there lies the, the problem. In order to detect problematic build machines, so uh, visualizing the failure segmented by machine, that's obviously, that, that was very powerful actually, because this uh, saves us wasting time looking for bugs in the, in the released code. Okay, so uh, in these cases, you can just kill the, uh, the problematic machine, let the autoscaler spin up a new one, and in many cases, it proved to, uh, to solve the problem. So saving a lot of problem, uh, and all the environmental versus code-related issues, it's, it's a big thing, 
so I'll show you later on that we even created more observability to get even finer granularity there. Uh, and another example, duration by step. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we could do that with uh, Jenkins, get into the specific run and see for each step how much it took on that specific run. But if you recall, we wanted to be able to see that uh, in an aggregated uh, information across pipeline runs, across branches, and to filter based on our interests. So these are the sorts of things uh, that answered this question. So just to summarize, um, these were some examples of visualizations, but you'll create your own based on your own uh, questions. And obviously, after the visualize comes the report phase. Um, so before, as I mentioned, the on-call engineer, the developer on duty, needed to go into the, uh, the Jenkins and look into the runs, the different runs. Sometimes, to be honest, people forget about it the first thing in the morning. So now, first thing in the morning, you get to Slack a notification. Uh, with, the, uh, with a report, give you a start of day report uh, of where things stand. You can even see that there is an embedded snapshot of the dashboard. So you don't even, if everything is clear in the last few hours, you don't even need to get into the dashboard itself. So this, it's very pretty useful to start the day like that. Uh, and obviously, this is a, a scheduled notification, beginning of day, but you can also do triggered alerts based on any of the uh, information, any of the parts that we collected on the collect phase. You can just define a query. Anything that you can express as a Lucene query in, uh, in, uh, in Elasticsearch or in OpenSearch, you can create uh, an alert. It could be a complex conditions, like uh, uh, if uh, sum of failures goes above x or, or uh, uh, the average duration goes above y, trigger an alert. So it's really uh, flexible in that regard. Um, and uh, we, we use Slack, as I mentioned, as internal engineer, but obviously you're not limited just to Slack. Uh, if you, if you work with PagerDuty, OpsGenie, VictorOps, uh, uh, I don't know, MS Teams, whatnot, you can send it downstream to any, any system that you work. Uh, uh, that's pretty flexible. Uh, that's part of the integrations that we also offer the, uh, at Logs.io. So uh, you choose your, your, uh, your poison. So that was the process we did for uh, Jenkins. But CICD is more than just Jenkins. So what else? What else do we, uh, we need to cover that we haven't covered yet? Who remembers from the original uh, requirements for the project? No, that, that's a KPI. But I mean, like, the requirement had four requirements. The requirement that we haven't addressed so far are the uh, analysis of flaky tests and test performance. So following the same process, we collected the relevant information from our test run and stored it in Elasticsearch, uh, and then created a Kibana dashboard that you can see here, the things that you would expect from, uh, from observability into testing, the test duration, fail test, flaky tests, uh, failure count, failure rate moving averages, uh, fail test by branch over time, flaky test suites over time, all the things that you would expect. Again, just reference, you define your own, but this is the observability through the same process. Collect, store, then visualize. And of, of, of course, after visualize, you can also have the report phase. Uh, we did the same as we, as we did for, for our production and for the, uh, what I showed you before. Get a Slack, a Slack channel dedicated for, the, uh, for this, for the tests. And you have a report, just like the same thing. Build alert Slack channel, very active. Another thing that I wanted to show you that is that the flexibility. So once you have all the data stored in Elasticsearch or OpenSearch, uh, you have the flexibility for different teams uh, to create different visualizations over that data to suit their needs, their styles, their conventions. Um, so uh, I took a, the other extreme, a different team from, this, from our organization that didn't like charts uh, whatsoever. The graphs only worked with the, uh, with the tables but ultimately achieving the same goal. So this is part of the flexibility, and uh, I encourage that. Actually, I have I just a couple of weeks ago, I was in, uh, in the Czech Republic uh, having a whole talk about platform engineering, and this is actually part of the, if you have a platform engineering team in your organization, this is where they can provide this centralized system and then allow the different teams to create their own style of visualizations, alerting, and so on. So this is the sort of the way to collaborate between centralized platform engineering that facilitates this uh, data and the teams that then visualize and alert on the data. Um, the flexibility and open, openness is very important. So just to summarize, 
how we gained observability. So uh, first, we instrumented Jenkins pipeline to collect the relevant data and put it in environment variables. Then we collected, we had the summary step at the end to collect all this environment variable information, put it into JSON, persist it into Elasticsearch or OpenSearch, then created Kibana visualizations on top of that data, uh, and lastly created reports and alerts on top of that data. So collect, store, visualize, and report. Okay, four steps to observability. So that was the beginning of our journey. And now let's go to the next step, okay? Uh, what if you want to investigate the performance of a specific pipeline run? So um, before I showed you how we visualize per step duration with Kibana, that was uh, uh, nice, but we can't uh, see there how a run builds up, uh, like the, the performance run builds up over the different steps and the sequence and so on. So uh, actually, that's uh, what distributed tracing is perfectly uh, geared for. Uh, and Jenkins can emit traces, trace data, just like it, as it emits uh, metrics and, uh, and logs. So uh, we decided to visualize jobs and pipeline executions as uh, distributed traces. So out of curiosity, who, uh, who is familiar with distributed tracing? With a show of hands? OK, and who uses that amongst the ones who raised their hand, use that today in production or in environment? OK. So not many, so I will say a few words about uh, uh, distributed tracing. Um, essentially, distributed tracing helps us pinpoint um, where failures occur and what causes poor performance in our microservice architecture or distributed uh, uh, application. So it's not specifically for CI CD performance. It's something that we use and many others use primarily actually in the production environment to understand the request flow through your microservices. Uh, and the way it goes, if a request comes into your microservice architecture or distributed architecture, uh, and you have like multiple microservices involved, maybe some, some uh, caching and some uh, database query and, and whatnot, and you want to understand suddenly that request, that endpoint uh, returns an error, I don't know, 404 or something like that, you want to know where this error comes from within this call chain. Or if you have uh, uh, suddenly a very high latency, you want to know where this latency is coming from, this is the sort of things that distributed tracing helps us do in production. Uh, in our case, obviously, in the, in the pipeline run to understand which step in the run uh, takes the longest and delays or, or whatnot. So this is why it's a good fit. Uh, and the way it works is that each call in the chain, in our case, each step in the pipeline, emits, creates and emits something that is called a span. You can think about it like a, like a structured log uh, with uh, the, the name of that uh, step or operation, the duration, start time, and so on. And then uh, there's a backend that collects all these spans, uh, reconstructs the full trace based on the causality, and then typically it's visualized as what you can see on the, on the right-hand side, uh, as, a, as a gun chart or as a, as a time, timeline view where you can really see clearly uh, A calls B and then B calls C. After C finishes, it calls D. And then when B finishes, then A calls E. You see the sequence, you see how much time each step took, which one ran in parallel, which ran sequentially, uh, and so on. So that's, that's really uh, tracing in a nutshell. Um, and uh, and uh, with that in mind, let's talk about how we achieved observability uh, in that case with distributed tracing following the same steps, okay? So the first step, as we said, collect. How do we collect? In this case, uh, we used open telemetry. Uh, who, who knows open telemetry with the show of hands? Okay, that, that's good to see. We have uh, like 40%, I think, here. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, a word about open telemetry. It's open telemetry is an observability framework for generating and collecting observability data across different signals. So uh, logs, metrics, traces. Uh, recently, we added uh, uh, continuous profiling as a, as a fourth signal. Uh, it's an open source under the uh, CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and actually I'm proud to say, as a CNCF ambassador, this is the second most active project in the CNCF after Kubernetes itself, so uh, a pretty active project. Um, uh, you have a, a QR code here for uh, a beginner's guide to uh, uh, open telemetry for those who are interested, uh, and it offers uh, many pieces. Uh, it has a specification, it has a protocol, and many others. I'm going to talk about the open telemetry collector that we used. Um, 
So uh, what we need to do in order to collect it, and by the way, it's generally available for traces, it's been for, for three years, so very stable. Um, and it was GA when we started this project, so we went with open telemetry. Uh, and the way to do that, as you can see here, the first step is to set up an auto collector, open telemetry collector. Then you install the Jenkins uh, open telemetry plugin. And then you need to just configure the, uh, uh, the plugin to send it to the open telemetry collector endpoint uh, via uh, OTLP over gRPC protocol. OTLP is the open telemetry protocol. So pretty uh, uh, simple. That's the collect phase. And once we have that, um, we have the store phase. And for the back end, we use Jaeger. Jaeger is another open source under the CNCF for distributed uh, tracing. It's a graduated project of the uh, CNCF. Uh, so we and we use that in uh, production. We actually have a managed version of Jaeger uh, at Logs.io. So for us, it was a no-brainer, just like we have a managed version of, of uh, uh, OpenSearch. So we went with that, the same thing. But if you run your own Jaeger, it doesn't really matter. I even added here a link uh, for how to deploy uh, Jaeger and Kubernetes in production. So you can definitely uh, use a do-it-yourself uh, Jaeger in this case. Doesn't matter. And uh, what we do. In this case, uh, since we use Jaeger for the backend, we need to configure the open telemetry collector uh, to send the trace data, uh, to aggregate it and send it to the Jaeger backend. And once we have that stored, uh, then we go to the visualize step. The visualize step is much easier in this case than Kibana or, or OpenSearch dashboards because you have a pre-built uh, visualization, the standard visualization for Jaeger. This is the Jaeger UI that you can see here. Uh, is uh, what you can see the timeline view, as I mentioned before. On the left, you see the indented uh, list that really shows you the uh, uh, sort of the structure, who, like one uh, st each step calling the next, very easy to see. On the right hand, you can see the, the gun chart, you see the, the pipeline sequence, how much time was spent on each step, um, uh, which parts ran in parallel, which sequentially, and so on. So it's very, very powerful visualization that most of the people using distributed tracing spend their time on this one. Although there are other uh, views like flame graphs and others, like uh, I think I brought, yeah, I put a slide. This is the, uh, the uh, directed graph view of the same, and you see the drop-down list on the top right with the different views. This is a view that we added very recently to Jaeger, the flame graph. So each one with his own uh, or her own preferences, really, uh, really flexible. So that was uh, adding traces to our Jenkins runs. But as I said before, CICD is more than just Jenkins. So what's next? So later, you can actually add instrumentation to Maven, Ansible, Artifactory, and other uh, tools for finer granularity uh, of the traces and the steps. So in this example, what you see in yellow is actually Maven build steps. So what before used to be like one black box long span, the one that you see just above it, suddenly you can open that span and have the breakdown into the di different build steps in Maven and see uh, which steps, how much, each, uh, how much time each step took, and so on and so forth. So really powerful, and uh, lots of uh, platforms already support. So Ansible has an OTEL, uh, open telemetry callback uh, plugin. For testing, you have uh, uh, Java JUnit uh, uh, has an adapter. If you're Python, there's a Python uh, plugin and, and many other. Even if you use bash scripts, you can plug it in and, and visualize it or, or CLI or things like that. So really powerful things to do to get finer granularity. And as I mentioned, after that, you can uh, you also do reports and alerts. I won't be showing that, but following the same flow, you can do in reports and alerts. It's just like any log data or anything else, so pretty much the same. So what's next? Um, we realized that many uh, pipeline runs fail not because of the released code, but because of the CI CD uh, environment. I'm just wondering if I'm the only one. So, how many had that experience uh, back home with the show vans? Be honest. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it's, it's uh, and, and really it, it happens and it's not negligible uh, percentage. So, we needed to understand and to f have final granularity to understand uh, and to monitor the metrics from the Jenkins servers and from the environment, uh, you know, the system, the containers, the JVM, uh, es essentially anything that can fail uh, irrespective of their released code. And following the same flow, essentially collect, store, visualize, 
and report. So let's see the journey in this case. Uh, for this case, we used uh, Telegraph. Uh, how many here know Telegraph? OK, not many. So Telegraph uh, is an open source by Influx Data that uh, has uh, a very st the strong suit is a very rich uh, suite of plugins. And I'm going to mention a few. So uh, follow the, the links. I'm going to show links to the, to the relevant plugins. Um, and uh, essentially, two phases for this step, as you can see here on the screen. The first is to configure Jenkins to expose metrics in a Prometheus uh, format. Um, we use Prometheus formats extensively in our production environment, so following the same conventions also for the CI CD. Um, and then you install Telegraph if you don't already have a, an instance there, and then configure Telegraph to scrape the metrics uh, off of the Jenkins servers with a Prometheus input plugin. I, I put the link there, uh, Prometheus input plugin. So that's the first the collect step. And then after collect comes store. Uh, and for store, as I mentioned, we use Prometheus extensively uh, for our production environment, and we also have a managed uh, Prometheus uh, at Logs.io. So for us, it was the, the natural choice to just carry on the same as we as we used to. Uh, and uh, the essentially, what you need to do in order to that, there are several patterns that you can do. Uh, uh, you can work with, uh, uh, as I said, I, I, we work with our own Prometheus, but everything I'm showing here works the same whether you use your own do-it-yourself Prometheus or some Prometheus-compatible uh, solutions like uh, Cortex, Thanos, uh, there are other open source sub other vendors. It's pretty much a de facto standard, so many Prometheus-compatible solutions out there. And essentially, uh, there are, uh, you can uh, configure Telegraph to send metrics to Prometheus in two ways. You can do that in pull mode or in push mode. So if you do that in pull mode, that's the standard Prometheus way, the scraping, uh, as, as it's called in Prometheus, then you configure Telegraph to expose a slash metrics endpoint, and then uh, uh, that Prometheus instance of yours can just scrape or, or pull the metrics off of that, uh, off of Telegraph. Okay? That's the pull mode. And, if you were, uh, and for that, use the Prometheus client output uh, plugin. You have the, uh, the link there. The name there, uh, and if you use it, if you want to do that in push mode, then use the HTTP output plugin, uh, and just remember to set the data as a, the data format to Prometheus Remote Write, so that it could be read by Prometheus compatible backend. So depending on your preference in your architecture, different trade-offs for that. And once we store that, the next step, obviously, uh, once we have everything in Prometheus, is to create visualizations, Grafana visualizations. Who, uh, who uses Prometheus and Grafana, out of curiosity? OK, so we have quite a few. So natural choice. Uh, this, is, and, uh, this is the so sorts of things. And again, I'm showing you, but I want to show you what kinds of uh, uh, we found, what kind of observability we found useful, but you adapt it to your own needs. Uh, first of all, obviously, you want to um, uh, filter uh, what you can see there at the top, filtering by build type, by branch, by, by machine ID, by build number, all these things that we said before that we want the flexibility to be able to uh, filter by. And then uh, let's see what we monitor. So you can monitor the system metrics, as you can see here, uh, like the CPU, memory, disk usage, load, uh, trend over time, whatnot. This is on the, CP on the system level. Uh, you can also monitor Docker container uh, metrics. Uh, so the container, CPU, memory, I.O., network, inbound, outbound, the disk usage behavior, and obviously uh, the how many running, stopped, and paused containers by Jenkins machine. So these sorts of things, and as we said, we can filter all and investigate a specific machine, a specific build, uh, build or build type, or any combination uh, of those, or branch, or whatnot. Um, another thing, you can show uh, the JVM metrics on the Jenkins machine, uh, such as the thread count, heap memory usage, garbage collection duration. So if uh, the latency is because of uh, 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 not, not optimally tuned uh, GC, uh, a, w a good way to see that, or, or similar, uh, uh, similar views on the JVM level. And you can also obviously monitor the Jenkins uh, queues and Jenkins jobs, Jen Jenkins executors themselves. So you can see here uh, uh, Jenkins, uh, the, the queue size, queue status breakdown, how many buildable, blocked, uh, pending, stuck, and so on. Uh, the Jenkins jobs, uh, you know, the count of jobs executed over time, breakdown by job status, how many aborted, how many failed, not built, uh, unstable, and so on, job duration. Uh, so actually, these were so 
useful, the dashboards, that uh, we got uh, asked by, you, by our users and we started offering them as, as pre-built content, like pre-built dashboards that users can install in a click of a button because apparently it, it was usable not just for us. So uh, uh, pretty cool uh, uh, dashboards that came out of that uh, experiment. And obviously you can set alerts on the time series data, on the metric data, just as we said before. So um, I want to summarize uh, what we've seen. And the first thing that I would say, as you can see here, is treat your CI-CD like you treat your prod, your production environment, okay? We all give a lot of attention to production, and for some reason, I don't know, CI-CD is the stepchild. So uh, just like you use, I don't know, Elasticsearch or OpenSearch and Prometheus and Grafana and Jaeger and whatnot to monitor your production environment, use the same for your CI CD, even use the same tool. So don't reinvent the wheels. If there's a stack that uh, has been working for you and your team, just reuse that same stack and the same skill set. Uh, don't reinvent the wheel. So, as I mentioned, we set out on this project with these four uh, requirements and goals. One is to uh, create dashboard to see aggregated and filtered information uh, across several pipelines belonging to different runs, branches, uh, in our time range of choice with filtering and, and so on. We wanted historical data uh, and controlled persistence off of the Jenkins server so that not to overload the critical path uh, and control our retention of the data. We wanted reports and alerts in order to automate as much as possible, like the, the end of beginning of day uh, 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 report and, and things like that that we've seen. And lastly, but definitely not least, is the test performance, uh, to be able to see the flaky test, test performance, and the impact of that, how much of the, the wasted time actually goes spent there. So, and the different uh, uh, means that we created, visualizations, alerts, and so on. And, as I mentioned a few times, but very important, the flow, if there's one thing to take out of that, the, the, your journey goes through very four simple, straightforward steps. There's the collect, store, visualize, and report. Uh, essentially, uh, you collect, you instrument your pipeline to get the events, state, metrics, traces, and so on. Then you store and visualize according to the data type. We mentioned the uh, Elasticsearch and OpenSearch for log-based data. We talked about Prometheus uh, and Grafana for metric-based data. Uh, we talked about uh, Jaeger for traces. Uh, and then over that data, once it's stored, you can set uh, uh, events and alerts, sorry, and, and reports uh, on top of the data. And uh, of course, if you can get all of these under one platform, that's even better. So here's the shameless plug that uh, my company, Logs.io, provides this as a, as a unified uh, platform, so you don't need to jump between two, uh, so many open source tools. You get all the open source tools as, a, as one unified platform. Um, and what we gain, so let's zoom out. What, what are the, what's the gain? Uh, a significant improvement to our lead time for changes, the DORA metric we talked about at the beginning, uh, and also an improved uh, on-call experience for our developers on duty. Uh, much, much more pleasant these days to be uh, on-call at Logs.io. Uh, and also, based on the same open source stack that we know and love, so again, not reinventing the wheel, what we used in production we re reused here, OpenSearch, OpenTelemetry, Jaeger, Telegraph, uh, and so on. Um, I wrote a guide to CI-CD observability. You have the QR code, so a lot more information about this journey and uh, best practices that I provide in this domain you can find in this guide to CI-CD observability. And one last word that I want to talk about uh, is uh, about uh, standardization. Because we talked about various ways of instrumenting and collecting the data uh, from, from Jenkins, but what happens if we now switch over from Jenkins to, uh, to another tool? Uh, or maybe we combine several tools, different uh, teams. The CI is here, the CD is there, and I don't know, the testing is there. The question is, uh, do I need to redo all the dashboards and all the alerts and all the queries and, uh, and uh, all my data collection uh, pipeline? Uh, or is there a standard for this data to avoid this, this tight coupling with the tooling? And 
Uh, I've been advocating for standardizing on CI/CD uh, observability for uh, a good few years, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to share that we've started work under the Open Telemetry project under the CNCF uh, for that. So uh, earlier this year, we established uh, a, a working group under the Open Telemetry's Semantic Conventions (SIG). SIG is a special interest group. Um, uh, and there's work on defining the relevant uh, attributes uh, to semantic conventions, the ability to propagate them over environment variables, and so on. I gave just a few uh, uh, outstanding uh, GitHub uh, issues and PRs that you can uh, have a look. And, uh, and obviously, this is open source. So uh, if you're interested in this topic, and uh, I encourage you to join the working group, we have uh, the conversation ongoing on the CNCF Slack on this channel that you can see here, OTEL-CICD. Uh, and we have weekly calls as part of the uh, semantic conventions uh, SIG and obviously on the relevant uh, GitHub issues. So if you are interested, if you are passionate, also grab me uh, after the talk. Happy to give more information about this. But uh, I think joining forces to get a standard way open specification for CICD observability will be a great win for all of us to achieve these goals. So as I mentioned, more information on the guide to CICD observability. And with that, uh, I'll say I'm Dutan Horvitz, and thank you very much for listening. <laughs> and ha happy to take uh, questions now. I think we have a few minutes. So, uh, whoever asks a question will get a sticker. May the open source be with you. So, uh, a, go a good reason to ask a question. I need my sticker right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the presentation. Very, uh, very impressive. I just have uh, one question about maybe, maybe the maybe the very last step of uh, of the of the of the observability is the analysis or, or the how to understand the result. Uh, at the end, it's kind of human interpretation of the report to say, okay, this is an issue or not. My question is, since we are in uh, say in the in the era of AI and uh, is there any other plugins or something else to re-understand at the end what would happen and to suggest directly what what would have without uh, human interpretation. Thank so you. So I guess uh, thanks for the question and uh, I get I try to avoid the AI buzz because everyone's been talking about AI and plugging it into the talks but happy that uh, that you brought the question. It's broader than just CI/CD observability. The challenge that you're talk talking about is uh, in general in observability also for production environment standard observability let's call it and uh, the way that uh, I see, I, I presented the classical way of observability, which is a human that is going to go through your dashboards, run some queries, Lucene, uh, PromQL, whatnot, and, and analyze the data and, and reach the root cause analysis. There is a lot of buzz and a lot of work being done on uh, automating some of that with AI, whether Gen AI, anomaly detection, and so on. I can tell you, for example, uh, my company at Logs.io, we have anomaly detection that shows you the anomaly within uh, your metrics or your logs or whatnot and shows that. You have some uh, generative AI that helps you. Then you can type in, hey, tell me what's, uh, what's awkward in my pods or something like that. The level of maturity, it's still we're still not there as an industry, as a community. So. Every vendor and also open source tools like uh, OpenSearch, for example, uh, recently released a very nice assistant, again, Gen AI assistant and anomaly detection. And so you see that on the open source sphere uh, and on the uh, also Kubernetes. I don't know if you know, uh, there's the Kate's GPT, a whole project about like uh, SRE assistant that can, you can ask what's the status of your clusters and pods. So it, it's everywhere. It's everywhere on the open source and, and on the... Uh, I, I even had in my podcast, Open Observability Talk, a dedicated episode just about uh, uh, AI for K Kubernetes. But uh, I don't want to, uh, to describe it... To, to be very realistic and very honest, it, we're still getting there. So I would still say the assumption should be you have a human there, you might be uh, having an extra step of an assistant, so in addition to that step that I said, visualize, you may have also an assistant there. I'll, maybe in a few years I will up update this flow to say, visualize and, and uh, consult, where you ask your assistant what's going on. Uh, many of the visualize also can flag, as I said, anomalies, so you can see the anomaly already on your, uh, on your graph. But uh, for now, we're still human-based in, in, the, in the root cause analysis. Any other questions? 
Okay, so don't be shy. You can grab me also after the talk. I'm, I'm staying here and check out the, uh, the guide. It gives also a lot of more information. And uh, may the open source be with you. <laughs>